So you're looking for something in your Excel sheet and you remember that Google's got an awesome search bar. So you wonder, hey, why can't Excel have one? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic search bar in Excel so you can find any values in a data set and stick around until the end for one bonus trick. So let's get into it. Here's the data set that we'll be working with, which you can download for free in the video description. So first up, let's convert this into a table by hitting Control T and hitting Enter. Nice. Next up, let's go ahead and copy all of these headers. So we're just going to select them, Control C and Control V over here. And basically, we want to have a search bar right above it and the numbers are going to be fill in or the values are going to fill in depending on what we search. And for that, we're going to have to head over to the developer tab, this one right up here. If you can't find it, just go to any tab and then under the ribbon, right click and hit on customize the ribbon. From in here, under customize the ribbon, you'll be able to find the developer over to the bottom. Just make sure you tick that and hit on OK and it should show up there. So I'll go to the developer. Under insert here, we want to head to active X controls and select this one that's called the text box. Let's just go ahead and drag it. Nice, so that's the text box and now we need to link it to something. So we're just gonna right click on it, head over to properties. And I know this looks a bit daunting, but basically under linked cell, we wanna put the cell that's right behind it. So it's gonna be H2 and hit enter there and just close out of that. Now, when we exit this design mode, we can go ahead and type in here and say put test and you can see that that shows up but there's actually no values that are happening nothing's happening down below that's because we need to add some kind of a formula to filter for all of these values in the data set we can do that by going to equals filter hit the tab key there and the array for us is whatever we're interested in so it's all of the values in our data set so we'll go Control shift down Control shift right comma the include, this is where we want to do the actual filter. So let's say that we want to filter by the first names. So control shift down, just selecting those first names and we want them to equal to the test value here. So that's going to be the H2 that we selected earlier, comma. And then the if empty is if there's no answer, then let's just put something like no match. Close the quotations, close up parenthesis and hit enter there. So we've got no match under the name test, but if we go ahead and put Janet say, now you can see that we're getting this exact value. So the search bar is starting to work. The problem here though, is that it only does exact matches. So instead of typing Janet, if we remove the T in the end, you'll see that it now says no match, but it would be nice to see everything that matches that Jane term, including Janet. For this, we're going to go back into the formula and make a few tweaks. So let's head over here where we had the formula and really under the include, this is where we want to switch things around a bit. So first we'll delete this whole area and I'm just going to type the formulas first and then show you how they work. So the first one is the is number, hit the tab key and then on inside of that, we're going to put the search function. So what we want to find is the H2 comma, and we want to find that within the whole first name column. So this one right here, control shift down there. I'm going to close the parenthesis for the search and then close it again for the is number and hit enter there. So now when I type Jane or even JA, you'll see that I get all of the names that start with JA as part of that search. Now to explain how these two functions work, the search and the is number, I'm going to go to equals search hit the tab key there. And so suppose we want to find H2 comma within all of the headers here, control shift down, and I'm just going to hit enter there. So you can see what it's doing is basically giving a one whenever there is a match. So we had a match for Janet, Janice, and down below we had another match for Jack over here. So those, those are all matching while the other ones give us an error. With that, we go ahead and put the is number next to it. So basically inside of it and hit enter. So this one gives you a true false depending on that. So now when we look back at the formula, you can see here that first it searches if it's a one or a value error. And then depending on that, whether it's true or false, we're gonna get the filter. And if you wanna learn more about Excel formulas in depth, 
you can consider checking out our Excel for Business and Finance course using the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have several other courses on financial modeling in Excel, data analysis in Power BI, pitch deck building in PowerPoint, and much, much more. And as you take the courses, if you get stuck at any point, you can always ask us, the course instructors, any questions using the discussions forum. If all of that sounds interesting, you can use the link in the description below to sign up. All right, back to the video. Now looking back at the search bar, we've got both a partial match by typing JA, as well as an exact match if we type Janet the full name. That said, when we type something like 55 for the age of Janet here, it doesn't quite find it, it says there's no match. And the reason for it is that if we look back at the formula, we're only working with that first column for the first name as a search bar. So we basically want to copy this whole area that says include here and add more variables to it. So we'll hit, we'll hit control C. At the end of it here, we'll put a plus sign and hit control V. So we had the first name and under this column, now we want to change that to the last. So here under the table, I'm going to change that to the last. Then I'm going to hit a plus sign again and control V. This time I'm going to change it to the country. And finally, I need to do one more there plus control V. And this one I'm going to change to the age. Then I'm going to hit enter here. And suppose now I want to look for the age of 40. You can see it starts to show no matches for 40. But if I type 45, you can see that there is an exact match there. And same thing goes with the countries, I can put USA and you'll see how it's able to filter for that too. Awesome. One final thing we should work on is actually making it look like a search bar, perhaps a bit like Google's. So let's head over here and first what we're going to do is insert a shape. So under shapes here, I'm going to go for a rounded rectangle like this one over here and just select it like so. I'm just going to change the fill color here to no fill and let me go ahead and add a border with a dark blue. Great. Now to the side, it would be nice to have the search bar icon, but first I'm going to add a dark blue rectangle for that. So under shapes, I'm just going to go to this one right here, which only has the top corners rounded. That's the one I'll select here and I'm just going to drag it along like so. And now we need to rotate it. So I'm just going to press the shift key and move it like that to the side. Then let me just fast forward how I resize this. Great. I'll change the color of this one to a dark, dark blue fill and go with no outline. So let's see what that looks like. Great. Now we need to add the icon. So we'll go back to insert and this time we'll insert an icon. That's going to be the search bar. So we'll put search in here. And we'll select this one over here and hit insert. Then let's change this color to a white. So graphic fill, go for white. And let me fast forward how I resize this. Nice. One final feature is to make this search box a bit larger. So we can go ahead under developer, click on design mode, and then we can select it and just make it larger. Let me fast forward that. Nice. Now we have a very nice looking search bar where we can type anything and it works just fine. You could also do one more thing to make the search values stand out a bit, which is add a conditional formatting. So we can select all of them with control shift down, control shift right, and then head over to home, conditional formatting, and then highlight cell rules that are where the text that contains here. So it contains the H2. So let's go ahead and select it. It's this one right here, H2. Make sure it's locked with those dollar signs. Let's say we put that in green. So we want it to stand out and hit OK. So now when I type say MU, you'll see that it starts to show wherever that M is located. That said, one of the downsides is that when there's nothing on it, you'll see that everything gets highlighted. And now for the final bonus feature, Suppose that we want to have a drop down list with all of the names here. So you might think of doing a data validation by heading over to data, then clicking this button here, which is data validation for you. And then let's go ahead and put a list. And that list is going to be of all of the names. 
So I'm just gonna go Control Shift down to select all of them and hit on OK. Now, the problem here is that these lists can get quite long, so it can be difficult to find the right name. Now, Excel does have a search feature inside of it, so I could go ahead and type JA here, and you'll see how I'm gonna get all of the suggestions in there as well. I can just use the down arrow and hit enter to fill one. Awesome, for more on Excel, check out this video here to learn how to clean up data or take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.